Ladies and gentlemen, we think that Egypt is better off without a democracy. We think that the problem that Egypt is facing today is that it's a huge chaotic hellhole that fails at implementing democracy because we think that actually it is better for that country and it's better for its stability if it would opt for dictatorship instead. And this is what we're proposing. We think that Egypt would be better off better off as an autocracy with a dictator who is capable and knows what he's, he or she is doing. We're not proposing to put some madman there. We think that the best, the most capable person could rule Egypt and could actually make it into a better country. And in order to defend that, we will have two arguments. First of all, I'm going to talk to you how the people, how a monotheistic religion in Egypt is not compatible with democracy. And secondly, I'm going to talk to, be, talk to you about why dicta dictatorship will work in the case of Egypt. Now <coughs> moving on to the first argument. We think that religion, uh, no thank you. We think that religion in general, a monotheistic religion, is based upon one God who is all knowing and all powerful and then people who are, uh, and then people who are the messengers of God. But what it also implies is that the majority of the population is always in need of guidance and is always completely unaware of what is right and what is wrong. We think that because of this, no thank you, historically uh, very religious states have always been autocratic, right? In, in uh, medieval Europe, it has always been the religious elite that has ruled those countries. And the reason that Europe right now has managed to establish democracy is because we decided to uh, become more <coughs> secular during the Enlightenment. Because the Enlightenment kind of showed that we were not abandoning religion, but we're secularizing the more uh, autocratic parts of the religion, such as we're actually allowing more freedom to the people and we're allowing to listen to the people's opinion. But we think that um, if, if that had not happened, if the Renaissance had not happened, Europe would, could, could have never actually established democracy because the very inrooted autocratic religion that we had would have been quite opposing that because you know you cannot implement democracy if you are if your entire life is guided by a religious notion where the people's will is usually subject to somebody more important no thank you and we think that egypt right now is in a situation where the religious religion is far too strong and far too autocratic to actually manage to promote any sort of democracy because we think that right now at the, during polls in Egypt, the majority of the people still want to stone people for adultery. This means that the people in that, that country have not yet reached that point where they're actually going to opt for more secular values, but more secular values are the base stone for any sort of democracy. And because of that, because Egypt is still way too religious and way too extremely religious to actually be able to implement democracy, and if we try to do that, there are two options of what would happen. One option is that the people will vote, but they are going to vote for an autocratic regime, will uh, vote for a regime that is going to turn autocratic immediately. Because people <coughs> in Egypt did vote for Mubarak, and they did do want a guy who is going to be strong and who is going to be you know, autocratic in a sense. So even if we allow them to vote, the result is going to, they're going to deliberately vote for somebody who is not going to be a democratic ruler, and it will regress back into autocracy. But the second option that may happen is it uh, will regress into an autocracy even if the people do vote for a democratic guy, but the rest of the institutions in Egypt are still inherently autocratic. The army is still inherently autocratic and the army, no thank you, is not going to support democracy. And so is the intellectual elite. The intellectual elite in Egypt right now consists almost entirely out of religious clerical elites. These are, uh, these are people with a very religious and a very conservative background and these are the same people who are promoting stoning for adultery. So we're saying that the religious elite and the army and the business elite are all extremely autocratic people and are all extremely anti-democratic and extremely religious which means that, no thank you, even if a democratic guy is voted for, he will be brought down because the elite and the majority of the people who actually have the power to decide what's going to happen to the country are still believing in autocracy. Therefore, we think that um, 
uh, um, a democracy in Egypt will be it will have no stability at all because all of these powers will keep on changing and they will regress back to uh, back to autocracy in any way. But now moving on to the other argument, which is why dictatorship works. We think that in the case of Egypt, a capable dictator can establish order, and because of it, can establish order because as the past two years have shown us the people in Egypt are very they're not passive they're aggressive and they're willing to stand up for for change in their country uh, no thank you uh, this, whether it be changed towards a more democratic society or whether it be changed towards something else so generally whoever is going to be a dictator in Egypt is going to have to be aware of the fact that the people are willing to uh, to fight against them and the people are willing to stand up if they're not okay <laughs> with uh, what he is doing and therefore we think that because of that constant pressure of a very politically active population, the dictator, dictator is going to be forced to make decisions that are going to be beneficial for the country. In order to avoid being hated by the entirety of Egypt, he will have to, for example, one, he will going to, he's going to have to give his people some basic human rights and he's going to have to give these people some basic necessities so that the people can rest uh, or can be uh, con content with their life. Therefore, like we think that the that uh, the people of Egypt, in case of a dictatorship, is are going to get some amount of human rights that will be enough for them not to be aggressive. And secondly, we'll think that this sort of a dictator will have to bring about stability because that is what is has been bothering Egypt throughout throughout all these years. The powers keep on changing, or not keep on, but the powers change quite often, and uh, and generally there's always some sort of tension. And we think that a dictator could easily, uh, with the power he has, make these tensions less, and if uh, and guarantee safety and stability for the people by being, you know, autocratic and by not letting some sort of uh, uh, aggressive groups uh, r rise to power the way it has happened. And because of that, they will also have more time to d to deal with their economy and make Egypt a stable place and a better place to live in. And for all these reasons, we think that dictatorship would be better for Egypt. The UK, yeah. Book can, yeah. Book can, whatever. Yeah, Amanda is. Amanda, Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm doing other things to. Thank you. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to present our case in which we believe that democracy is actually the peak of human evolu uh, evolution in which we believe that democracy is beneficial for human, both on the human <coughs> rights and this humanitarian point of view and on the economic point of view. And also we believe that uh, imposing democracy in certain countries is allowing these countries to have uh, better uh, uh, international relations, which would be our main three arguments. But before that, I would like to refute a bit on what um, Vicky from uh, Government Spent said. Firstly, and most disturbingly, uh, what we do not know from that case is who would impose the new leader. And that's exactly what, what, what is really, really uh, missing in that plan. And that's what really we feel that it's something that um, is extremely important in these cases. Because uh, autocratic leaders are either imposed by revolutions or by civil war. They, they simply, we do not, uh, we don't see a uh, calm way in which you can impose an autocratic, a dictator in an autocratic uh, uh, leader. That, that, that's that, that's uh, one of their biggest <coughs> problems. Uh, secondly, I would like to speak about religion, which is uh, really, really confusing for us, because what's their point is that monotheistic religion, Islam, which is predominant in Egypt, is actually preventing them from being democratic, because religions usually tend to pretend, uh, prevent people from being, de be being democratic. Their explanation is that basically in monotheistic religion we have uh, a lord or a god, Allah, whatever, who says uh, that people should be their followers, therefore we are more likely to have a strong leader that would resemble to God or whatever, but this is exactly against any single monotheistic religion. Like, the only messiah in Christianity is Jesus Christ, the only God's prophet in Islam is Muhammad, uh, the only, I don't know, uh, Jews are still waiting for one. I mean, <laughs> so, so you don't, you don't, you don't get to impose a leader or a president or whatever as a leader who will be according to the God's will, according to Sharia, whatever. That's extremely against religion. 
Secondly, about democracies and religion. USA presidents are being sworn on the Bible. They put a hand on the Bible and say, oh, I will protect the Constitution. Israel is an extremely religious country, giving the, the surrounding Israel, but they're still democratic. We have Poland, we have uh, Ireland even, where, where, where Catholicism is extremely strong, Italy. But they, these countries are still democratic. In every single election, you have, especially in Poland, you have a really, really strong Catholic church. Like They have really big problems with that conservatism, but every single election are being democratic. So your argument that religion and monotheistic a, a point of view is some, has something to do with democracy is completely not true. Like there is not a single thing that stands within this argument. Secondly, um, about heading into autocracy and that whatever people of Egypt do, whatever they try to do, any single demonstrations would lead them <laughs> back to autocracy. Well, that's actually the, the biggest mistake. The thing that the fact that the uh, citizens of Egypt are demonstrating, the fact that the citizens of Egypt are went on Tahrir Square against Mubarak, against Morsi, trying to impose new uh, autocracy, is actually the fact that proves that they are ready for democracy. That, that proves that they actually want to be democratic. That they want to show their public opinion. That they want to uh, that they take care about the future, uh, which. Uh, which the, about the country that they should live in the future. So basically, what's happening in Egypt is quite opposite of what you said, is that uh, it is bleeding them back to autocracy. And autocra autocracy is by definition something which is against human rights. Even those, let's say, Sorry. hidden, no, even those hidden autocracies, such as Russia, which is officially a democratic country, we see that Putin has to take human rights from his citizens in order to control them. If you want to control <coughs> people, if you want to have a stronghold on them, you have to be autocratic, you have to take human rights from these people because autocracy, that it, it, sure. it's simply what it is, no. It's simply what it is by definition. Now, um, I will uh, proceed to our own arguments. Firstly, that demo democracy is the peak of human evolution. Sure. Although we are aware that democracy has a lot of, I don't know, gaps and that it might be uh, problematic, but five, two and, a, uh, two and a half thousand years ago, democracy was invented. And after two and a half years of evolution, we've come to the point where we believe that democracy is the best solution for our nation, for our people. We believe that this individualistic approach, where the country takes care of its citizen, where the country allows prosperity and growth for each single human being, where country is considered about every single member of its society, that is exactly what democracy is. And that is why democracy <coughs> is the peak of human evolution. Egypt is obviously ready to do this, which demonstrations quite clearly show. That would lead me to my second argument, is that democracy is best for the people. Firstly, because it gives them right to choose in Egypt. People of Egypt are for the first time caring about their reality and their future. People of Egypt have stood up against Mubarak, who, uh, who, who, who was ruling in Egypt since um, 1981 or 1982, and they've stood up to say something against him, to, to show that they want new approach, they want new government. On the other hand, we have democrat democratically elected Mohamed Morsi, who started uh, to starting, uh, taking away democracy for, for, from, uh, from his citizens. <coughs> he started by his presidential de uh, decree, by all the other things that, that he done in the two years while he was in power, he started taking away democracy from the people of Egypt. That's why they stood up again, which clearly shows that people of Egypt are quite aware that th their time has come, that, they, that the people, no thank you, I won't be taking anything. Uh, that the people of Egypt and this demonstration, this what, what you call chaotic situation, instability, is exactly what proves this. How did we get to democracy in first place? How did we get French Revolution? How did we get any single change? It has to be uh, in this way. It simply is the way that the, 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 the things work. The, thing, the fact that it, that it is chaos now in Egypt is just the way they're trying to resolve their situation and the way that, that is the ultimate proof of their readiness to accept democracy. Of course, I, can, I, I really don't believe there is need much to explain about the economic benefits of the democracy. You might argue that also autocratic countries such as China have economic benefits, but only in democracy country takes care of each individual citizen. And we believe that that's the only way that the people of Egypt would prosper, because uh, when the country takes care of each individual citizen, their standard of living is rising, they care about their citizens, and that's, I think, ultimate proof that uh, democracy is suitable, <laughs> which is actually proved all the rich and stable countries where we care about citizens are actually democratic. Thirdly, affecting international relationships. We believe that there is ex extremely big danger if you give everything to one single human being, especially when it comes to Egypt in this really turbulent region, the far, uh, uh, 
uh, the, the Middle East with bordering with Israel and everything else. So if you put a person, one person to rule Egypt, we believe that this will be dangerous for all, for the surrounding, for the region and for the whole international community, given the fact that one uh, person is under power. Thank you very much. <laughs> So what I will do is actually show to you again how the people in Egypt are not yet ready for democracy. We're not saying that they will never ever in the future be ready for democracy. What we're trying to prove is that right now in the 21st century, in 2013, Egypt is far better off with a dictatorship regime, which I will explain further on. So first of all, let's do a short rebuttal of what they said. Who would impose the new leader? The strongest person would be the new leader, like in every democratic society, like in every autocratic society, and actually like in every democratic society. Usually, the strongest person gets elected because people want to see a strong person uh, leading them. So it's not it's the same thing. In autocratic regimes, the strongest person is in power. In democratic regimes, the stronger person is in power. Uh, and actually, frankly, we do not care who actually imposes the, the, the dictator. What we're saying is that having democracy in Egypt right now is a worse solution than having a dictatorship uh, yeah, right now. So uh, they say that the USA swears in the Bible and the elections in Poland are not secular enough. Actually, they're far more secular than they're in Egypt. So in Egypt, you have to be a part of the, uh, of the Muslim community or something in order to be in that high position. Yes? Can you be U.S. president if you're not Christian? Uh, I'm not really sure, but you probably can, and you can fake that you're a Christian. It doesn't matter. You just not have to follow the Christian code in order to be a, uh, a president of the United States of America. <coughs> and it's not like Egypt. As I said before, you have to be a Muslim elitist, a Muslim person, actually, I'm a hardcore Muslim person in order to be uh, in high power right now. Uh, they say that protests show that they want to be democratic. No, it's the other one. They just say that they're politically active. They, they say that the people in Egypt know what they want, uh, and what they want is actually right now dictatorship. Uh, no, thank you. And uh, let's move on to their argumentation. They say that the democracy is the best solution, and that every single person is important. China doesn't think so, and China has the greatest economic prosperity in the last 20 years because China doesn't think every person is important. They take away a bit of human rights for the economic prosperity, and that's why people in China don't die of hunger. Uh, later on, this, it also can be an autocratic regime. If, uh, people can be on an equal level even in an autocratic regime. We are not saying that the people in there should be oppressed. They should be literally oppressed like they were, uh, I don't know, in Syria. They are in Syria right now. They just need to have a single ruler that they do not choose because, as it was explained by my previous speaker, they are not ready to choose their single ruler. We are on the state that people have the right to choose. Yes, they do have the right to choose right now, and that's why they picked Morsi. And that, that's why even now they have an autocratic regime in Egypt, because they have the right to choose, because the, the army is autocratic, the institutions are not ready right now, and that's why they also they still have Morsi, they had Morsi in power until two months ago, and now right now the army is in power. They all turn into dictators. Morsi was democratically elected, Mubarak was democratically elected 30 years ago, and they all turn into dictators because that's what the people there want. And the third thing was international relationship. And they said we need stability in the region with democracy. Actually, if we have a strong dictator, if we have stability in Egypt, which is one of the biggest countries in that area, we will have stability in the region. So dictatorship brings stability in that region. We see that uh, in the 1990s and 2000s, we did not have wars in the Middle East. Wars started happening when people started imposing democracies uh, in those countries. So let's now, yes. Uh, we had a strong leader in Yugoslavia. What happened afterwards? Uh, the strong leader died, Yugoslavia divided. How did it divide? Yeah, it was, it was a war that was solely based on, national, on nationalism. It was not a war based on who wants democracy. Everyone wanted, dem wanted democracy in Yugoslavia. And actually, Yugoslavia was kind of an autocratic regime, just like Russia is right now. Uh, let's now move on to, our, uh, to strengthening our case. So the people in Egypt do not want uh, democracy at this present moment. So they're choosing the same thing over and over again. We see that they chose Mubarak 30 years ago. They didn't learn from their mistake that we saw, that we saw in the democratic world want to think of. They choose, chose another uh, autocratic leader in Egypt that was uh, Morsi. And what happened? After 150,000 dead people in Egypt, in the, in the region, again, they chose the same thing. And that's what's going on even now. Uh, the, the dictators are doing some bad things. The people don't like them. They change them. 
nothing ever else changes except for the name that's leading the country. So they want the strongest person to be in power, and that's what side government here wants to prove. People there in Egypt are taught from the law, from the uh, from the youngest age that they, they should be guided, that they need guidance from a person above them, from a, maybe a messiah of God, maybe a person from God that will guide them, or maybe a higher political power that should also be a man of God. This is what's going on in those countries. Uh, and the second point is, is Egypt is hipster. Uh, institutions there are shit right now. They're not actually uh, in a condition to work in a democratic society. Uh, the people there, as I said before, are, in high, are high in the Muslim hierarchy and they do not uh, enforce uh, democratic things. So in order to enforce democratic democracy there, right in 2013, you should actually kill every single person in Egypt that actually is in some sort of power because all of them are high on the Muslim hierarchy and they're all interconnected. So Egypt is not ready for democracy right now. It's just, it's still before, at the beginning of my siege, in 50 years it might be when they gain consciousness, but right now, no thank you, in order to enforce the democracy that the opposition so wants to, uh, they have to have a huge, huge civil war where they, where they kill uh, everyone in the country. And uh, another thing, the USA is a jealous bitch right now. The USA wants to, it wants to impose democracy in every single country in the world so they can have better uh, relations with them. And that's to face uh, according to us. They want to impose democracy in order to steal, uh, it might be a conspiracy, a conspiracy theory, but they want to have good relations with those countries. And it's a two-faced thing. Egypt is hipster, they do not want a democracy yet. If you want to be, yes? How do you explain 100,000 people in Tahrir Square screaming for democracy they're not ready? Uh, Tahrir Square, you mean? In Turkey? Uh, Takrim, I have no idea what Takrim Square is, I'm sorry. It's the main square in Cairo where the... Uh, I have no idea, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. I have no idea. So, uh, let's, lo let's look at uh, what actually... Uh, what, why the people exactly are not ready, as explained actually before. They're people with power. They, they, the highest person in Egypt in the hierarchy in the institutions are people with power that have connections with... They're strongly connected with the Muslim community out there. And people in Egypt want to follow those certain people because 99% of, of the population in Egypt is Muslim, is hardcore Muslim. So they still support stoning people to death and 95% of the Egyptian population also uh, wants to kill people that commit a, a, uh, adultery. So we see that people there are not ready for the liberal values that democracy as a system promotes. So in order for the people in Egypt to have greatest prosperity right now, and in order to, to prepare themselves for maybe some sort of future democracy in 50, 100 years, we beg you to vote for the government and for the dictatorship. Thank you. So to start today, we asked um, the opening government how this autocratic ruler is going to come through, who is going to appoint this leader, and they say that the strongest person comes through. And this is exactly what we see happen right now in Egypt, where the military came through, and it was too strong of a power. The military, the problem that we have right now with Egypt, the people that are being abused, the human rights that are being taken away, happen because the strongest person does come through in an autocracy, and sometimes that power, and most of the time that power, is too strong and does not create the most stable government government does not create a government that people want to be in and that and um, a government that takes away human rights and that is what we're going to talk about today uh, in our rebuttal and case. Um, a second, on the topic of our opponent's religious points, these make absolutely no sense. First of all, we show, we talk about the fact that uh, these people don't want an idol um, to replace their god, to pretend to be a god, because that actually goes against fundamentally the Muslim religion. But second of all, we can see that a majority of U.S. citizens are Christian. For example, all U.S. presidents have been some form of Christianity. Um, they swear on the Bible uh, because of this, uh, that, that, that the people voting for them are Christian and they uh, respond to that. But this doesn't mean that the democracy is lessened by that fact um, that the U.S. has been a democratic country for, uh, for 200 years now and it's been extremely um, beneficial in, in that way um, of promoting those values um, that we want to promote today in our case. 
Um, and so this comes to our first argument, uh, where we talk about um, uh, the peak of uh, government evolution, which is democracy. Um, democracy is something that we have, that we have evolved to. Um, it is the highest form of government. It is the one in which the people are taken <coughs> into account. It is one in which each person's vote, uh, no thank you, um, is taken into account, and they're able to choose their own leader, and thus choose their own government, and create the society that they think best represents um, their population. Uh, the fact that the citizens are demonstrating right now, as I'll go into later, proves in Egypt that they do want democracy. They want this type of government. Um, and uh, no, thank you. Um, so now let's move on um, to the fact that the people revolted against Mubarak. This is our second argument. Um, these people, they want rights. Uh, Mubarak, first of all, our opponents say that uh, Mubarak was elected. Uh, he was appointed by Sadata, and they revolted against him. Um, right now, we see 100,000 people in Tahrir Square against dictatorship. 100,000 um, Egyptians that, uh, against Adam. dictatorship. No, thank you. Um, this is proof that the Egyptians do want democracy. So if anything, right now, this is a major point in today's round because we see that what the people want and what the rights that they're not getting, um, it, how they feel that they can fix that is through democracy. And that should be taken into account. The standard of living that they want um, and the way that they feel that they can get it. Um, so that should be taken into account. Uh, no, thank you. Um, second, we talk about um, the economic uh, benefits and the prosperous. And our opponents say talk about China. First of all, um, they say that they take a bit of human rights to uh, to do what they want. First of all, China takes a, a fair bit of human rights, so I don't think that should be any point for our opponents. But second of all, there are no living standards in China, and that is the point that we're trying to make today, is that the democratic country is the only kind of country where you're going to have both um, economic prosperity and living standards for the people because the people are voting on these things, because they um, are included in society, and they're thus able to improve their living. There is... Um, <coughs> They're in the type of a society, um, I'll take it in a sec, uh, where they are um, where they are able uh, to uh, have social mobility um, and so on. And so this is why we see that we want a government uh, that is not an autocracy like China because the living standards are terrible and we want a democracy for Egypt, yes. We, don't, we do agree that democracy is probably the best, but the thing is, if the majority of the institutions in power in Egypt are autocratic, if the majority of the people are autocratic, right. how is it going to Okay, work? so you, this comes back to your point about how you're saying there's like this uh, religious elite, but first of all, uh, Egypt is not one of the most uh, fundamentally religious countries in that region to begin with, um, so already we're, that point is lessened, but second of all, we see that Morrissey um, was elected, there have been democratic elections in the past, um, and they can do it again, uh, no thank you. Uh, so then we come um, to the argument uh, that, that, that is, um, no thank you, no thank you. Uh, we come to the, our last argument on foreign relations. The first of all, our opponents say that dictatorships bring stability, this is gonna be helpful. First of all, this is just simply not true. We see many examples of this uh, of dictatorships not bringing stability and more often they bring revolts and they bring war, such as right now in Egypt, such as in Latin America, um, in Cuba, so, so on. Um, dictatorships have rarely ended um, without some kind of civil war, some kind of um, upheaval and some kind of upset from the people because their rights are being Used, just as they are upset in Egypt right now. Um, our, what? Why did the people in Egypt choose Morsi when they knew what kind of a person he was being, like head of state, kind of head of something before? They, 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 um, sorry, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so moving on, so we, we have this foreign relations point, which is the fact uh, that when they're, um, when the uh, country is democratically uh, electing a leader, um, it makes it more likely for other democratic countries to support that country, um, and especially this is a, in, incredibly important for uh, Egypt's relation with the United States, um, and we see the, uh, the fact that, uh, that it also for its relationships with, uh, with Israel and the region. Um, if there is an autocratic ruler in power, it is less likely that they will be trusted by these countries, um, and it's so important for uh, maintaining stability in that region. Um, our opponents also mention Syria as a point in their favor, but Syria is having a war right now because they don't want their leader right now. That's another point to our side. They're, they're having a war the same as Egypt is revolting right now against their um, autocratic government because they um, uh, they uh, want... Uh, yes? Uh, Egypt is actually revolting and protesting against a government that they elected. They didn't elect the military. It was a coup. Um, it, anyway, so on. So basically what we see today is we have uh, four major arguments 
for the idea of a democracy. We see that most of our opponents' points um, about an autocratic ruler go to our side because we see that the, the autocratic rulership that will come into power is going to be too strong. That is how autocratic rulers come into power, and that is how the military came into power in this instance. We also see that the people of Egypt want this want this democracy. They have been protesting for this democracy, and it's and they wouldn't be protesting for it if there wasn't a reason. They are missing on human rights. They are they want to be able to elect their own leader, and they want a better standard of living. Um, we also see that our opponents' religious points make no sense, which is their fundamental part of their case uh, for why we should have an autocratic leader, um, because we see that they, first of all, are not going to just elect someone uh, to play God for them. Uh, that doesn't make sense with their religion. But we also see that be, uh, having a religious leader does not take away from the fact of, of how well a democracy can function. In the end, we see that uh, we're increasing stability in the region through democracy by um, improving relations with Israel and the United States and other Western countries. And we also see the economic benefits of a democracy that not only help the country, but also the citizens as well, and for these reasons, we urge uh, opposition. Thank you. Wish me luck, guys. Hey, are you guys no. related? Sorry? Don't you guys have the same last name? Yeah, we're brothers. Yeah, we're brothers. Okay. Hey, what? So, yeah, so are you related? Yeah. This is going to be interesting. Uh huh. Hey, fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> I have done all my life, so this should be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Barry's messed with me up, messed me up all my life, as he says. So now it's time for my revenge. Okay, first of all, I'm going to prove to you why, I'll give you a political reason why I'm show you that democracy in Egypt, in this case, will not work for different reasons. And secondly, I'm going to talk to you about how um, a dictator can impose stability and why it will be better than the alternative proposed by democracy. But first of all, uh, a little bit of rebuttal. Okay, the opposition, the, the opposition say that the protests in Egypt prove that they want democracy. Well. Actually, they proved the opposite, because before the protests that were happening now against the Islamic protests, there were even bigger protests, okay, tr seeking to throw out the ruler that had been democratically elected. The Egyptian people were not satisfied by the results of this um, election. Secondly, they say there has to be chaos for democracy, that Egypt has to be in chaos now because that's just the way it is. We think that the sign that there has to be chaos for democracy is a reason for democracy not to exist at all. We believe that um, less people will die in less chaos imposed under a, dictator, under a dictatorship, and we believe that a country's uh, responsibility towards its people is its most important thing. Next thing is they say that democracy <coughs> looks after every single citizen, and it is the only uh, system of government that does so. No, it does not. Democracy looks after the majority. De Ever, anyone in parliament that votes for for the majority, once they voted for that, that majority party has the power to do whatever it likes in parliament, and the minority can't influence that party and make it do whatever it likes. I'll take you. Aren't you aware? I, I guess you're not quite aware how democ democracy works. So basically, you have the the duty to take care of every single citizen who's voting. I think you're not aware how democracy works. What happens is that people vote for a government and whichever party gets the most votes becomes the government and then gets the power to pass votes through the parliament because it holds the majority in the parliament. A party does not get voted by promising to look after everyone. It gets voted out normally by promising to look after a certain, a certain group of people and people who support its values support that. So that's why a party gets elected and the people who don't support the party that elected are out of luck because the party that is elected is in power and they can do what they like. Next thing is they say that uh, dictate autocrat autocracy is too strong and that reinforce and that will cause no stability. No. Sometimes to maintain order in a school you do need a strong and strict principle. Principle. Last thing they say is because we want democracy because the US will like it. Well, guess what? If we don't have democracy, China will like it. So the international <laughs> relation will be restored that way. Okay, on to why democracy won't work in Egypt. In order for democracy to work, there has to be a set of predetermined conditions, political conditions that simply just do not exist in Egypt, not just because of the religion. The way democracy works is because if everyone gets an equal vote, 
and the votes are counted on the basis of majority, then what the majority of people want will go through. In democracy, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. And that loser will be the minority that voted against the referendum to join the EU. But because the majority voted against them, the minority are going to have to accept that um, no, that no, I'm going to have to accept this for the country and no, I can't join the EU because that is what de democratically happened. So in the first predetermined condition is that the mi minority who lose the elections have to be willing to step aside and accept that yes, the majority have won here. That does not, e that majority have won here. Second condition is that the majority <coughs> have to be willing not to walk over the needs and wants of the minority. The majority has to give them a fair treatment and not give them any cause to rise up and revolt and start a war. <laughs> Let's examine whether or not those conditions exist in Egypt, okay? Does the, is the minority willing, no, first of all, is the majority willing to treat the minority reasonably? Okay, well, let's, a Morsi got elected. He went against the will of a minority of 60% of the people trying to enforce through an Islamic constitution and give, his and give himself more power than the Supreme Court. So no, Morsi was clearly not willing to listen to the will of the minority who didn't vote for him in this case. I'll take you this time. Just because it doesn't work in one case because it changed the way he said he was going to be elected, why should we give up on it? Because this case will hold true for the rest of the cases, as I will explain now. To prove that, I'm going to have to look at why. Why is Morrissey not willing to look at the needs of the minority? Why will the minority? Uh, why is the minority not willing to sit back and let Morsi push through his Islamic constitution and instead start firing guns and throw up protests until Morsi <coughs> is overthrown by the army? This is why. Because Egypt has just come out of a revolution. Egypt has just come out of a situation where the people <coughs> who didn't, where the people who weren't getting what they want fought for it and caused instability and fired guns until they did get what they want. They have just come from a situation where fighting for your ideals and not giving up on your ideals, you know what you see in the movies, fight for your dreams, don't give up, yeah? They have just come from a situation where that is the predominant ethos, where that is the only way to get what you want. There is a time, but there is a time and a place for that. That anger is still there, as we have seen in the fact that the minority are not willing to um, bow down to Morsi's will and throw protest and cause instability in the country. Oh, where was I? <laughs> yes, okay. That is not the case in Egypt. I was <coughs> explaining something and I was in a really good role there and I've forgotten where it was. So yes, the minority are, yeah, okay. They've just come from a revolution where they, their ideology is being uh, pushed and they're encouraged to fight for their ideology. They need time. They need to be able to let that ideology slip away, okay? It's time for society to go back to normal, okay? That is why in every situation that comes from democratically elections, okay, the majority will vote for someone that's either Islam or not Islam, okay? If it's Islam, the not Islam will rise up and cause protests and cause chaos in society. And if it is Islam, the not Islam will rise up and cause protests and chaos in society, as was so beautifully demonstrated for us by the protests that the opposition themselves pointed out. So what, how will a dictator impose stability, okay? Well, a dictator does not have to look out for the rights of the people that voted for it. it does not have to, he does not have to appeal to a group, a particular group of people and follow an extreme set of ideologies in order to get elected. No. Will, no. Will um, this make people like Ptolemy and Aristotle happy? No. Will it be <coughs> pleasing to people in the US and poets and scholars who think democracy is the holy grail? No. What it will provide, what it will do, the most important thing, is stability. The ordinary person in Egypt, because of th this dictator being in power, enforcing stability using the military, will be able to go to work, will be able to do their job normally, and society will be able to go back to normal. Economically, how do we know they'll do a good job? Because the army is not like other armies. The army of Egypt controls 40% of, econ of the economy in Egypt. That's how we know that it is in the interest of the army to do a good job. I'm finishing in one second. Finally, uh, okay, I'm gonna finish now, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks, and I invite little brother to give a speech not to exceed seven minutes to start off the uh, closing opposition. Now, I would like to start by case by, as Josh so eloquently pointed out, fucking up my brother and 
his size case. <laughs> now, I believe something has been missed in, in this debate. The opening up government came out here and said, we propose a dictator. But then, and the opening, opposition, the opening opposition asked the question, how would we impose? They answered, and I quote, we do not care. The strongest person will take over. Now, how, is, how exactly is the strongest person going to be selected? Is it the person with the most money? Is it the general of the army? Well, hang on a second. If the person needs to be selected, I, no, thank you, Ronan. I quote that it is not a dictatorship, but it is a democracy. Therefore, the people have been given what they want. Uh, Barry? You're out of order. Yes. Uh, you're out of order. Okay. Barry? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, we could just very easily keep the system at the moment, which is the army has um, control of the country with ultimate power resting in the head of the Supreme Court. You're contradicting yourselves there again, though, because you say you want a dictatorship. The army is imposing a government when you say you want a dictatorship and all of a sudden you want to keep the status quo? Is that what the government in a debate is supposed to do? No. Now, you are, a lot, you are saying that people elected Morsi because <coughs> they, they knew what was coming. Wrong. They elected him because what he promised, but when he was in government, and this is what my main point is going to be, that when he was in government, he got corrupted by power. When he was elected, he started taking powers away from the Supreme Court and introducing Sharia law to an extent that the majority were not happy with. They got what they wanted, which was democracy. But this was their, as I like to call it, Hitler moment. It will not happen again because the people are aware of this and they, do, and they will make sure that it doesn't happen again. Now, um, no, thank you. on to my own arguments. Now, what they oppose with, what they propose with the dictator, in my opinion, is frightening. No. The, what is to stop this? Once this dictator is in power, what is to stop him getting corrupt? They never, an, they never answered this, and therefore I must. Sir. Yes. Uh, this, uh, the, uh, the people will stop him from getting corrupt just as they uh, managed to manage Morsi by keeping protesting against him. Yeah, but he's a dictator. He w what the, he's a dictator that has been put in power in order to cause stability and exact. No, thank you. Why were you talking for corruption? No, I sat you down. Mm -hmm. Um, the, you say a dictator then will cause stability. You have just proved yourself wrong by saying a dictator will not cause stability if he becomes corrupt, which is most likely what will happen. The people will rise up and then more and more things will happen. It's just going to be one of these vicious circles What's in that? life. No, thank you. Now, we agree, peace must be implemented. But the Egyptians, must sort, uh, the Egyptians must sort out the differences. They cannot, no, and will not be forced into doing this um, in, any other, in any other way than talking, to, than talking about it, sitting down and talking about it. If it is done in any other way, i.e. a dictator, someone just thrown in front, someone just thrown on top <coughs> of them and say, listen to me, I rule you now, all the riots will come to the surface again, as was pointed out. Now, um, as I want to cite myself as an example here, which is the point that just because you stumble doesn't mean you should fall. I am a hurler. Hurling is an Irish sport. I, have, I am seen as a good hurler, and the next level up for me is county hurling. Now, I have tried for several years to get into this county hurling to play for my Galway to to represent my county in the sport that I love. I have tried for years and years and years, and every time I have been turned down. Does that mean I just stop? Does that mean I stop what I love, what I want? <coughs> no. We believe that no matter how hard, and as my partner will point out an eloquent example, and excellent, no thank you, will point out an excellent example of how this is true later, we believe that you should not stop fighting for what you want. Oh, sorry, oh, yes. Uh, so, 
Let me equate this in sports terms. It's like playing football, breaking your leg, and continue playing with a broken leg. You're just doing damage to yourself. You should stop, give up for the moment, and then continue on 15 years later in our case. Yeah, you said you should, yeah, but in your case, you said you should impose a dictator. You never said that later on you try again for democracy, which we are saying that you should do. Now, um, yeah, Point, sir. yes. Uh, while we was talking about corruption, how can you corrupt a dictator when he has everything? What can you give a man that he has everything? What he wants. He has, uh, according to you, he, he, is put, he is put in power. He, uh, he is all powerful now. He can do whatever he wants with the country. Don't you see that as a bad thing? There's no one that can actually stop him <coughs> to do whatever he wants. Because if the public come out, you'll say, oh, this is, what you, this is what you wanted for me to be in power, and now you're suddenly going against it. Now, um, I hope I have uh, eloquently fucked up my brother, and I please beg you to vote for closing government and more importantly, the opposition. here to tell you why Ronan must win against his little brother. Probably. So, first of all, we was talking about a realistic situation and not a utopia. There is no such a thing in Egypt in status quo. We as government has clearly show why democracy won't work. It won't work because people are not prepared for that. And they were like, keep mentioning it to us that 100,000 people was at the square protesting against them. But what is 100,000 people comparing to the real population of Egypt? There might probably be 8, 9, 10 million people living in Egypt and 100,000 is just nothing, even in democracy. So, uh, going to our next point, how the... Uh, how the democracy, how the system will be imposed in Egypt. Uh, this is this is another question that it was uh, that we gave answer because of the army that is ruling the country right now, and because of the army there in Egypt owns one, uh, owns forty percent of the whole production line in the state. So it's in army's interest that the dictatorship goes on really good because. Uh, while people are satisfied with that, their incomes will just keep growing and growing. No, thank you. Uh, this is how the dictatorship will work and democracy will not work. Uh, Egyptian army is just not like any other army. They produce like washing machines, microwaves, water, bottle of waters, and it's just a completely different army that rules 40% of the economy of the state. So, what is most important for an Egyptian as a citizen in his country? As my partner really clearly defined, it's important for him to get up in the morning and go in job safe and come from the work safe. Yes, I'll Don't take Don't you it. think freedom is quite important for people? Because they keep on, you know, making revolutions. Yes, yes, yes. Them. Freedom is really important for people. But it comes after the right of life. He has the right to live first, then he has the right of freedom. And it's not violating human rights if he wakes up at 8 a.m., go to work, come back at home at 4 a.m. I, I don't see that there's anything uh, really stopping him from being free while he is free to live and while he can go safe and come back at home. So we must not be like, let's choose what represents them and what's it's better for them because we don't know what's better for them. They're there living their lives and they need a system that provides life for them. And this, as we have shown to you, is clear a dictatorship that is really in probably the supervise of the army. So how, uh, how democracy has its benefits and how they're not in practice this time. 
They're not in practice this time because the country is not ready. It just has, it just has uh, passed too many riots and as uh, Ronan tell to you, they really are in need for, they are really uh, born and grown with the mentality that you must fight for your ideas. And they'll keep fighting for them ideas and they will now have consideration for minority and the majority will just step over them. So this is why they need someone to prepare them for democracy. We're not saying that Egypt must quit from democracy forever. They might be a democratic system coming after a long period, but right now it just simply won't work. Yes, Amanda, I'll take you. define giving up as that's not doing it now or doing it later? Well, right now it must give up from democracy because it's not working. And this is how we see. So, how it will impose stability, not just in, uh, how it will st um, impose stability in Egypt. Uh, we believe that a dictatorship, it will impose stability because it will unite the nation and they'll be united under one thing that they'll keep working for the future and they will keep like uh, caring for the economic system that is really, really important for the people. So. Uh, this is how we believe that Egypt m can move forward and not by giving them something that they're not ready for it. They are not ready for democracy and this was clearly shown onto our case. So uh, we have, we have uh, like the main clash point that we believe that it happened is that if it's democracy going to work and, or it's not. We clearly believe that by the facts that have been represented from the government, we've shown you that democracy, it ain't going to work. Yes, Bukhan. Um, the first government said they would like to impose a dictator who would rule, and you said that he will be supervised by the army. Can you please well, explain? dictator dictator has a like co-membership with the army because it's army owns him and he owns army so it's like okay. something relevant to them and they'll be providing that dictatorship that egyptian need not now uh, so uh, as the as we have been shown you that the dictatorship it is going to work and the egyptian people are ready right now just for it and not for democracy we don't want to let usa just simply think that what's better for them it's better for anyone we must, uh, we must understand the mentality that's there present and we must understand uh, the, uh, the real needs of those people. So, let me repeat you again, democracy, it is not going to work there. We've shown you clear facts why it's not and how the economy will be better with the dictator ruling and how the economy is not going to work if it's in full democracy because then we will probably have a chaos system there. And, ladies and gentlemen, for the sake of the Egyptian people, for the sake of their real life, we beg you to propose this resolution. Uh, question. Uh, Egypt to summarize the round that we had today and the class, the major classes that we had today is dictatorship <coughs> versus democracy, uh, religionalism uh, versus freedom, uh, probability of failure versus better future, uh, temporary stability versus struggle for a permanent one, uh, and uh, oppression versus justice. So uh, I'd, like you to, I'd like to explain why our side wins this game because uh, first of all, uh, the prime minister stated that they will choose the right dictator and uh, how uh, and then uh, they will choose a uh, place someone in the throne and uh, very surprisingly even uh, Osni Mubarak or uh, our another guy wasn't placed in the throne uh, by the people and uh, it uh, worked out so fine that they want to do that again so that the nation goes into turmoil again and they did not exactly mention how would they choose the uh, right dictator and how he will not turn out to be another Mubarak or another Morsi as they said they do not care uh, who becomes the dictator and then uh, uh, they also stated that dictator will fear people and uh, will respect their rights wow that has happened till now so uh, they, has re uh, they are fearing 
people and they are respecting the people's right uh, even mubarak did right even hosni uh, even uh, morsi did so this is not working and uh, we like to uh, con focus on the fact that for no sir uh, we'd like to uh, state on the fact that no nation can pause for healing it's not a football game it's not nothing a nation doesn't work that way it will just deep root in the tyranny and it will erase uh, the f future scope of uh, uh, democracy. Uh, why? Because even our nation, I am from Nepal and I would like to set my own example here. What happened was we placed, uh, we, got, we were in the same situation and we placed an autocrat on the throne uh, uh, seeking, uh, uh, as the method suggested by the, uh, prime, uh, by, by the uh, proposition, but it didn't work. We did that for stability and it didn't work. We got a, a civil war, faced a hell lot of tyranny and enforced every imaginable form of government which uh, did not come in the media just because we are an underdeveloped country and the media was not focused uh, on our situation uh, you, just because you people didn't know uh, and this situation was hidden. But we tried every imaginable form of government and we fought for democracy for 169 <coughs> years and we finally achieved it and now we are finally very happy and we are finally in peace. No thanks. We are finally... No thanks. We are living in freedom and this is what we achieved after not giving up 469 hours, after not pausing for healing uh, of the tyranny and after not sacrificing democracy for dictatorship, not sacrificing freedom for religion because even in Hindu religion, uh, religion uh, the king or any tyrannical ruler is termed as Lord Vishnu which is the supreme leader in any religion uh, which we term as and we, we, deserve, we uh, even our religion states the uh, head of the government as uh, Lord, but we didn't stop for religion, uh, religion, uh, religion to compromise freedom. No, thank you. And we didn't compromise our failure for the for better for getting better future. And we didn't choose stability over struggle for a better uh, and a good uh, form of the government. And no, thank you. And. Believe me or not, we were oppressed in such a way, but we never stopped. What you term healing, why we uh, say that Egyptian did not need to hold for healing because they have yes. suffered a lot. No, thank you. From, 15, uh, from the 16th century when the Ottoman uh, uh, took over Egypt and they, uh, they, fought, they did not fight for, uh, against the Ottoman <coughs> Empire. They, uh, uh, they just sustained, they paused for healing, let's say. And they, uh, got, uh, they were occupied by the Ottoman, they were occupied by the French and they were occupied for 400 years. Isn't that enough for pausing? Aren't they supposed to be free now after 400 damn years of struggle? Yes, we say that Egyptian deserve freedom there because they have lived in 400 years of tyranny, 400 years of suffering, 400 years of being secluded from freedom, being secluded from justice, being secluded from every form of human rights that they are actually supposed to require in a democratic country. No, thank you. Because now uh, now we uh, would like to uh, focus on the fact that we stumble once we stumble twice maybe <coughs> we some stumble tens of times but we do not give up because some stumbling is just not enough reason to compromise on the fate of 80 million people stumbling is just not acceptable to freeze the hope of uh, freeze the future hope for uh, a better life. Stumbling is just not enough for erecting a, a dictator for the sake, stake of stability uh, at the stake of people's lives. Uh, no, thank you. Stumbling is just not enough uh, to compromise the rights of people and it's not totally uh, acceptable as it might clear, uh, calm situations for the world. But for in the long run, Sorry. Egyptians will have... Th please do not interrupt me. Uh, uh, please stand up if you have any PY, just don't interrupt me. No, thank you. Uh, b because, uh, um, sorry, uh, it's not just enough, it's not acceptable as it might calm situations for a while, but it might settle things for a time being, but there will be another uprising, another resistance, another struggle for freedom, another, th no thank you, another struggle for not giving up the hope for freedom and people will rise uh, even if you impose some uh, dictator over there or even if you uh, uh, impose some army rule over there, people will still struggle, democracy will never give up, no thank you. Democracy cannot be given up because you cannot just put a dictator then and hope for 80 million people to follow what the dictator wants them to do to for, uh, just for the sake of uh, stake of stability. And one major thing that our opponent argued, how much time do I have? So another major thing that uh, our, my opponent argued was about uh, uh, 
uh, the living life uh, versus uh, live life versus freedom they said that they are already living why do they want freedom my friend living in a cage is not life that's not called life that's just you're breathing you're just respiring that's not life life is about freedom life is about getting every right you need when you are born uh, you are born a human you must be allowed to uh, live every aspect of life that someone in the west is has got to live that someone in the east has got to live and someone not having a dictator has got to live so we strongly win this uh, we uh, we strongly uh, urge you to vote for us because we have already won uh, this uh, debate <coughs> as freedom in always in life versus freedom freedom wins because without freedom life has no uh, meaning <laughs>